Hello, Mr. Lum. Harry woke early on Saturday morning and lay for a while thinking about the coming Kidditch match. He was nervous mainly at the thought of what Wood would say if Gryffindor lost, but also at the idea of facing a team mounted on the fastest racing brooms gold could buy. He had never wanted to beat Slytherin so bad. After half an hour of lying there, with his inside churning, he got up, dressed, and went down to breakfast early, where he found the rest of the Gryffindor team huddled on the long empty table, all looking up tight and not speaking much. As eleven o'clock approached, the whole school started to make. Its way down to the Kidditch Stadium. It was a muggy sort of day, with the hint of the thunder in the air. Ron and Hermione came hurrying over to wish Harry good luck as he entered the locker room. The team pulled on their scarlet Gryffindor robes, then sat down to listen to Wood's and Wood's usual pre-match pep talk. Slytherin had better brooms than us," he began. "No point denying, but we've got better people on our brooms. We've trained harder than they have. We've been flying in all weathers." "Chu chu," muttered George Weasley. "I haven't been properly dry since August, and we're going to make them." Rue that day, they let that little bit of slime Malfoy bore his way onto the team. Chest hopping with emotion, would turn to Harry. It it'll be down to you, Harry, to show them that a seeker has to have something more than a rich father. Get to the snitch before Malfoy or die trying. Harry, because we've got to win today, we've got to. So no pressure, Harry," said Fred, winking at him, as they walked out on to the pitch. A roar of noise greeted them, mainly cheers, because Ravenclaws and Hufflepuffs were anxious to see Slytherin beaten, but the Slytherin in the cart made their boos and hissed her too. Madame Hooch, the Quidditch teacher, asked Flint and Wood to shake their hands, which they did, giving each other threatening stares and gripping rather harder than was necessary. On my whistle, said Madame Hooch. Three, two, one. With a roar from the crowd, to speed them upward. The fourteen players rose toward the leaden sky. Harry flew higher than any of them, squinting around the snitch. All right, there, Skir Hat! Yelled Malfoy, shooting under at him, and the to show out the speed of his room. Harry had no time to reply. At that. Very moment, a heavy black bludger came pelting toward him. He avoided so narrowly that he felt it ruffle his hair as it passed. Close on, Harry," said George, striking past him with his club in his hand, ready to knock the bludger back toward his leathering. Harry saw George give. Give the bludger a powerful rack in the direction of Erdin Pussy, but the bludger changed direction in midair and shot straight for Harry again. Harry dropped quickly to avoid it, and George managed to hit it hard toward Malfoy. Once again, the bludger swore like a broomage and shot at Harry's head. Harry put. On a burst of speed, and jumped 
toward the other end of the beach. He could hear the bludger whisting along behind him. What was going on? Bludgers never concentrated on one player like this. It was their job to try in and seat as many people as possible. Fred Weasley was waiting for the bludger at the other end. Harry ducked as Fred swung at the bludger with all his might. The bludger was knocked off course. "Gotcha!" Fred yelled happily, but he was wrong. As though he was mag- magnificently attracted to Harry, the bludger pulsed after him once more, and Harry was forced to fly off at full speed. It had started to rain. Harry felt heavy drops fall into his face. Spla- splattering onto his glasses, he didn't have a clue what was going on in the rest of the game until he learned. He heard Lee Jordan, who was commanding to say, "Griffin, ha- Slytherin lead, sixty points to zero." The Slytherin superior Brooms was clearly doing their jobs. And meanwhile, the map bludger was doing all it could to knock Harry out of the air. Fred and George were now flying to so close to him, on either side, that Harry could see nothing at all except their failing arms and had no chance to look for the snitch. Let alone catch it. Someone tampered with this bludger. Fred grunted, swinging his bat with all、oh, his might, as it as it launched a new attack on Harry. We need time out," said George, trying to signal to Wood and stop the bludger breaking Harry's nose at the same time. Wood had obviously got the message. Madame Hooch's whistle rang out, and Harry, Fred, and George dived to the ground, still trying to avoid the mad bludger. "What's going on?" said Wood, as the Gryffindor team huddled together, while Slytherin in the crowd jeered, "We're being flattened, Fred, George. Where were?" Where were you when the bludger stopped Angelina scoring? We were twenty feet above her, stopping the other bludger from mummering Harry Oliver," said George angrily. "Someone's fixed it. It won't leave Harry alone. It hasn't gone for anyone else. Oh, game! The Slytherins must have done something to it." But the bludgers have been locked in Madame Hooch's office since our last practice, and there was nothing wrong with them then," said Wood anxiously. Madame Hooch was walking toward him. Over her shoulder, Harry could see Slytherin jeering, pointed in his direction. "Listen," said Harry, as she came. Nearer and nearer, with you two flying around me all the time. The only way I could catch the snitch is if it flies up my sleeve. Go back to rest of the team and let me deal with the rugged one. Don't be thick," said Fred. "It'll take your hat off." Wood was looking from Harry to the Weasleys. Oliver, this is insane. Said Alicia, spinning angrily, "You can't let Harry deal with this thing on his own. Let's ask for an inquiry. If we stop now, we'll have to forfeit the match," said Harry. "And we're not going to lose to Slytherin just because of a crazy bludger." So come on. Oliver, tell them to leave me alone. This is all your fault," George said angrily to Old. "Get the snitch or die trying. What a stupid thing to tell him!" 
Madame Hooch had joined them. Ready to resume play, she asked Dude. Wood looked as the determined look on Harry's face. All right, he said. Fred, George, you hold Harry. Leave him alone and let him deal with the bludger on himself. The rain was falling more heavily now. On Madame Hooch's whistle, whistle, Harry kicked hard into the air and heard the telltale whoosh of the bludger behind them. Higher and higher, Harry climbed. She, he looped and swooped, spiral, zigzagged, and rolled. Slightly dizzy, he nevertheless kept his eyes wide open. Rain was backing his glasses and ran up his nostrils as he hung upside down, avoiding other fears driving from the bludger. He could hear laughter from the cloud. Crowd. He knew he must look very stupid, but the rogue bludger was happy, and couldn't change direction quickly as Harry could. He began kind of roller coaster ride around the edges of the stadium, squinting through the silver seats of rain to the Gryffindor goalpost, where. Adrian Pussy was trying to get past Wood. A whistling in Harry's ear told him the bludger had just missed him again. He turned right over and sped in the opposite direction. Train for the ballet, Porter! Yelled Malfoy as Harry was forcing to do a stupid kind of tour in midair to dodge the. Bludger, and he fled. The bludger training a few feet behind him, and then glaring back at Malfoy's hatter, he saw it. The golden snitch. It was hovering inches above Malfoy's left ear, and Malfoy, busy laughing at Harry, hadn't seen it. For an unnoticing moment, Harry hung in the midair, not daring to speak to Malfoy in case he looked up and saw the snitch. Whoom! He had stayed still a second too long. The bludger had hit him at last, smashed it to his elbow, and Harry felt his arm break. Dimly dazed by the searing pain in his arm. He slid sideways on his rain-drenching broom. One knee still crooked over his right arm, dangling on last at the side. The bludger came padding back for his second attack. This time, aiming at his face, Harry swerved out of the way. One idea firmly lodged in his numb brain. Get to Malfoy. Through a haze of rain and pain, he died from the shimmering, sneering face below him, and saw its eyes widen with fear. Malfoy thought Harry was attacking him. What? The, he gasped, craning out of Harry's way. Harry took his remaining hand off the broom and made a wild snatch. He felt his finger close on the cold snitch, but was now, but was now only gripping the broom with his legs. And there was a yell from the crowd below as he had his straight for the ground, trying hard not to pass out. With his Flattering that he hit the mud and rolled off his broom. His arm was hanging at a very strange angle, riddled with pain. He heard and threw from the distance a good deal of whistling and sounded. He focused on the snitch clutched in his good hand. Ah、uh-huh, ha! He said vaguely, "We've won!" and he fainted. He came around, rain falling on his face, still li- lying on the field, with someone leaning over him. He was a glitter of teeth.